I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, talking to trial lawyers. I have one uh, with me now. Um, just got to organize one thing, Scott. Just give me 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, so joining me now is Chris Tietze. He is a, uh, are you of, of counsel of Levin Papantonio? I am of counsel. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, try again. No, I am of counsel. Thank you very much for having me. Um, and you have been uh, working on the Johnson & Johnson talcum powder case? Or, or, or I mean, t- tell me, just give me the update. What, what What's happening with that? Well, um, just on Friday, uh, Sam, they... Uh, the FDA announced that there was uh, that their independent laboratory had found um, the evidence of asbestos in samples of uh, talcum powder products that Johnson and Johnson had marketed. Uh, they pulled um, they pulled the uh, sample that they tested off the shelves, so it's the kind of uh, the kind of bottle that y- you or somebody else might uh, might purchase at the store and. Uh, um, as a result, uh, J&J uh, has withdrawn a lot of um, a specific lot of talcum powder products. I really have to say that this comes on the heels of 40 years of denying that there is any potential problem uh, with their flagship product. Now, so wait a second. So my, my understanding is that the 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 issue with the talcum powder in the past has not has not been necessarily asbestos, but it has it, it functions like asbestos on some level, or is it that it's a carcinogen? Well, I, I think you have to back up a little bit, Sam, and talk a little bit about um, that this is a product that that people pull from the ground. I mean, you you, you go into a mine um, when you talk you, you when you <clears throat> when you say you're talking you're uh, mining for talc, you're really pulling out of the ground talc and everything that comes with it. Right. So it is typically the case that. Uh, uh, there's asbestos close by. There's nickel. There's chromium, um, and um, you know there are certain tests that they instituted to try and uh, minimize the amount of of these known carcinogens in talcum powder in the 1970s. But they really never updated their um, their testing protocol, and so there's always been a concern uh, that the talc you buy uh, is not pure talc. Um, against that backdrop, for 40 years, you've had um, researcher after researcher after researcher from Harvard, uh, from different countries, uh, who have found that there is an increased risk for women uh, using talc and ovarian cancer. Wow. And, and, and now, my understanding is that, has that case been resolved? I mean, or, or where, where, what's the status, uh, I mean, uh, of this ongoing sort of, I guess, claim? I mean, where, where are we uh, in terms of... Well, I mean, well, where we are right now is uh, there have been some trials in various state courts around the country, Missouri, California, Georgia. Um, most of the cases for legal jurisdictional reasons are pending uh, in the United States District Court for the District of New Jersey. Um, and the judge right now is considering issues relating to uh, whether or not uh, the case can, can, can proceed to trial in federal court. So we're kind of at, at, at the point where um, I think a lot of the um, scientific questions are going to be addressed by the court. And, and those scientific questions are to what extent um, to what extent are the carcinogens in the powder? To what extent has um, did Johnson and Johnson have the ability to know that the testing they did in 1970s is not, up to par for today's ability to test and at what point I guess uh, you know over the course of this past 40 years should they have retested with new technology and new ability to assess what elements in there might be carcinogenic you you know that's really one of the questions Um, the bigger question is whether or not uh, the use of of, um, these powders um, uh, by women um, for hygiene uh, are capable of causing ovarian cancer. There are a lot of aspects to that. Um, and, you know, I, I, what I think is really important is that regulators are starting to catch up with what scientists have known for many years. Um, there were recently uh, hearings in the House of Representatives on the question of whether or not um, this product is 
is really safe. Um, the Canadian FDA has concluded that there is that it can cause ovarian cancer in some women. Um, the FDA now seems to be starting to step into into the into the breach. What what is important is that the judge will uh, will consider all of this and 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 d let us know whether or not we can proceed to trial on on the question of whether talc causes ovarian cancer. Um, the presence of asbestos is part of it. Um, I, I liken it to a cigarette. You know, you we all say cigarettes cause cause ovarian can uh, cause lung cancer. Um, we don't worry about whether a cigarette contains 500 carcinogens. Right. Um, talcum powder contains asbestos, contains fibrous talc, which acts like asbestos, nickel, chromium, all kinds of things that are potential mechanisms. Um, plausible mechanisms for causing ovarian cancer. For you to get a, um, um, for the plaintiffs to win in this case, what do they have to prove about uh, what Johnson & Johnson did or did not know? Well, okay, so now you're, you're, you, we're going to the question of what they knew and when they knew it. Um, I, 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 how do I say this in, in, in a way that, 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 I think we have to step back and look at the product we're dealing with here. Um, this is a product, candidly, when I first took, started the case, I scratched my head and said, this is baby powder. If you can't trust baby powder, what right. can you trust? I mean, you, when you, if you have a child, you leave the hospital with, with you know, um, your child, a blanket, and baby powder. That's what you leave the hospital with. So I think there's a general reluctance of people to understand that even something like baby powder can be a problem. For, the, the the first human study on the question was in 1982. Um, there have been close to 40 studies um, conducted since 1982, all of which showing that women who use talcum powder products, um, Johnson Johnson's baby powder, shower to shower, um, are have a um, 30 to 60 percent increased risk of ovarian cancer for baby powder, okay, and they've known it, they've known it for, they've known about these studies for 40 years. Um, it's remarkable to me that a product that you can go into the Kmart, pull off the shelves, and and, 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 and use on your on your children, on, on has the ability to cause cancer, and there's not even a statement on the label that says, do not use it um, for personal hygiene. Wow. Um, and so uh, we're waiting on those cases that uh, that have been uh, uh, that are in that uh, that, that, that federal court now, federal court. and we're waiting. Uh, candidly, what we're waiting for is for Johnson and Johnson to acknowledge that there is a problem, and there there has been a problem for 40 years. And instead, what they're doing is they are using their platform to suggest, you know, maybe there was something wrong with the test, maybe there was something, uh, maybe there was cross contamination in the lab, the right. kinds of things you typically see. What I'm waiting for them to do is to step up and 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 tell women what the Canadian FDA has suggested. Do not use it for personal hygiene. Um, you know, there's no reason why even the, there should be a potential a question about the safety of something as as ubiquitous as right. baby powder. Chris uh, TC, uh, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I should say.